Pegasus is a scientific workflow management system created by USC ISI. Pegasus can handle huge workflows consisting of thousands of tasks. The question is how to specify such a workflow. While, ver while a workflow is inherently visual, nobody wants to draw such large graphs. Scientists typically write Python or Java programs to generate the XML file Pegasus expects. This can be done because these workflows typically have a regular structure so that an algorithm can specify them in a relatively compact manner. On the other hand, it is hard to tell from a program listing or an XML file whether the correct workflow was specified. A visual representation would clearly be beneficial. As a proof of concept demonstration, we created a graphical representation for Pegasus workflows using WebGME. The key is the introduction of multiplicity and two simple visual operators, fork and merge, to represent repetition and branching. Let's see how this works in practice. Let me open a new tab and go to webgme.org. Okay, here is the WebGME website and I can actually log in. And since it already remembered my credentials, I didn't need to provide them again. Uh, WebGM is actually hosted on the Amazon Cloud infrastructure. It opened up uh, with a default uh, project, but I'm going to instead open the Pegasus one. Right. So here we built a few models already. Let's open this one called the tree. Up here we see that this model has three aspects, all which shows everything, and then the workspace aspect, aspect only shows uh, uh, the way how we want to specify uh, the workflows, and then you'll see how the preview aspect is uh, being used. So the first interesting thing is up here, it's called, this object is called a file set, and you can see in its name, if we click here, that right now it says down here, dx and then in brackets 1 through 3.txt. Uh, but really this means that this is an input file set consisting of three files and uh, those numbers represent the pattern, so basically it's one named dx1 through 3. So this is three files, then we are going to fork it. What this means is that all those three files will be handled independently, so whatever is underneath this fork will be actually repeated three times. Okay. Here we see some kind of workflow uh, processing those data files. And then, once we are done with that, we'll merge them together. It will create, again, a single file set. Uh, and then we'll do some processing on that to generate the final result. Okay. So that's our workflow specification uh, here. And now we can actually run our generator that will create a preview of this workflow. Okay. So we'll say run Pegasus. And in this case, I want to generate the preview, but I'm not interested yet in the uh, XML file. So save and run. Here you see that it already finished. So we can actually go to the preview aspect. And you see that it basically created the workflow that we uh, specified with the file names dx1 through dx3 for each of them. The entire workflow was repeated and then down here the results were merged and then the finalization task created the final result. Okay. So if I go back to the workspace aspect again, change the name from 1 through 3 to 1 through 5, for example, okay. run the code again, again just generate the preview, finished, and now we can see that Indeed, this was repeated five times and the final result is still merged. So basically what this does, it basically debugs our uh, workflow specification. And once we are happy with it, okay, we can actually go ahead and create the really large workflow specification that we want, let's say consisting of 200 uh, input files and 200 branches. And now we're going to run this code again, but this time we are not going to generate a preview. Instead, we will go, going to generate the XML file. So 
So let's run this. It's already done. So now we can say show the results. The top one is the most recent one for the large. So we can download this three config.zip file from the server. It just went off the screen, but let me quickly open it. Here is the zip file, and the only thing it contains is this tree.dax file. Uh, that's the extension for uh, the Pegasus workflows. So let's open this with text editor. Here we are. So you can see that basically it generated all the required parts of the Pegasus uh, workflow specification and you can see that it is actually several thousand lines uh, long. All right. So that's a simple example. Let's quickly look at a somewhat more complicated example. It is this nested fork specification. So in this case, we have a file set with four files. We'll fork it. Each of those branches will be forked again. Uh, we'll be generating a file set of three files. That will be forked again. That will generate a file set of two files again forking so each of those will go through this particular job then we'll start merging generating file sets as we go along after the second merge we have an extra job generating yet another file then after the final merge we are getting the final file set and an extra job will generate some final result file okay so let's run this code, but right now we are only interested in the preview. Okay, it's done. Let's look at the preview. You can see that on the top we have indeed four of those files. Each of them is split three ways, then each of those is split again two ways, and then we'll start to merge doing that extra job there, and then finally generating the final result down here. Okay, So you can see that uh, with multiplicity, that is file sets, uh, with a uh, pattern that specifies how many uh, there is in, in, in its name, and these forks and merges, we can actually create quite huge and complex uh, workflows. How did we do this with WebGME? So you can see, we can go to the meta view, and here we actually, here is where we uh, define the language, the graphical representation using a UML class diagram-like notation. It also has multiple uh, sheets in this case. This specifies all the connections. Okay. And there's just a, a simple top-level component. And the, the preview aspect is actually uh, specified here with these particular objects and uh, that connection. So that's one aspect. This is where we specify the language that we can use then to, to create those workflows. And then also we wrote uh, a JavaScript code that takes this graphical representation. This one interprets uh, what these mean and generate either the preview or uh, the XML file or both. Of course, these are only the simplest uh, workflows that we can imagine. Uh, more complex uh, visual operators uh, are also needed uh, and uh, we'll work on that in the future. Uh, thank you.